Well, we want to welcome everyone to our Sunday evening, April the 26th, online service. Uh, you know, Sundays are so different, but they're still exciting to me, uh, even if it's only uh, through our online services that we can meet together, I still know that it's Sunday, and so we hope that you do as well and that you make Sundays a special day in your home. Yeah, we mentioned this morning some date changes and some events and activities uh, this morning. Uh, be sure to keep up to date with all those events and things on our Facebook uh, and Instagram uh, social media outlets. Uh, we'll be making uh, some here near in the near future about events that we had scheduled or planned in May and uh, into June. And so as we're uh, able to and as we are led to make those uh, either changes or to reschedule them or to have plans for them, uh, we'll try to let you know those things as soon as we possibly can. Uh, Wednesday evening, I also mentioned to you that uh, we want to make our spiritual life journals available uh, to anyone who might want one. Uh, they're uh, a tool that uh, I put together uh, last year, made available to our church family, and uh, they're just a compilation of several years of uh, resources and different types of materials that I use in my own uh, personal devotional life each day. And uh, we try to kind of just compact it and streamline them, put them all together in one package for you. And uh, we made them available last year to our church family. We did it again this year, made some updates and, and, and some improvements we feel like to it. Uh, they cost us about $5 to put together the binder and uh, the, 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 team, the, the material that it, that it takes to put them together. Uh, but we're making them available to folks. Uh, if you would like to have one, uh, you can contact us about them, uh, and uh, we can try to arrange for you to pick up one. Again, they're about $5 in material cost that covers our cost for it. Uh, but we'd like uh, for anyone to have one, especially right now during this time, to help you. It's just a tool and a resource we feel can help you to make the most out of spending some time with the Lord each day and uh, give you a plan for that. I know I need a plan to use my time wisely and get something profitable from it. And we feel like they'll help you. And so if you'd like to have one or know a little bit more about it, uh, let us know. We'll have that information on our Facebook page this week and Instagram. Uh, also, we'll be putting online uh, Facebook book and our website uh, a, a series of lessons that uh, I taught last year and was in the process of teaching this year in, in March uh, when we were interrupted uh, with, the, with the virus and the social distancing. And uh, it's a set of lessons, a series of lessons on how to use the journal and do it effectively and uh, to make it a part of your normal life until it uh, becomes a part of life. And so I'm going to put all of those online and make them available to you. And uh, you can have those resources and you can uh, read them and I'm sure they'll help you. Uh, but uh, that's something that you can be looking forward to uh, this coming week. Well, I want to encourage you all as we... Uh, are now uh, this far through this time uh, to take time to evaluate where you are. And I don't mean that in a physical sense, but I mean that in a spiritual sense. Uh, are you still growing? Are you building? Uh, are you strengthening? Uh, are you standing still or moving backwards? Uh, this is an important time. And so I want to encourage you to don't, don't allow your spiritual relationship with the Lord to suffer. Uh, ask yourselves, uh, what, what maybe were you doing and, uh, and implementing in your life when this all began to happen uh, that was really helpful and uh, was causing you to grow and to build? Maybe some of those things you've let lapse in your life as we are now into this thing now for an extended period of time. But now's the time to regroup. Now the time to reestablish spiritual and biblical priorities uh, in your heart and in your home. Well, continue to pray for our families. Uh, continue to let us know if there's a need or something special you want us to pray for. We still are thankful for God's continued hand of, of care upon us, our church families, and our community by and large. And so we're thankful for that. Uh, our hearts are there and, and, and touched by some of you who who do know and have had in a personal way a, a, an experience with this virus. 
Uh, and so uh, if we can be a help to you, minister to you, uh, talk to you, uh, help you to try to reconcile it all in light of the Word of God and God's work in the world, please let us know. We want to try to do that to be a help to you any way we can. Well, I hope you have your Bibles ready. Open them up to Hebrews 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Get them ready. Get your spiritual life journal ready. There's a place in there uh, for, for sermon notes. And uh, many of our people carry them to church. And uh, we'll see them open. And uh, uh, it uh, has a place there for you uh, to put down the notes and uh, the, the passage of Scripture, the time, the date, all these things. And then a way to apply it to your life, that truth to your life that's a life-changing truth. And so if you have that, you can get that out and get that ready. And uh, we're going to look at God's Word together right after some special music here for this evening's service. The sun is slowly sinking The day It's always a blessing to us, and we're thankful for those who are helping us with that uh, as we move through this, uh, this time together. Well, I hope you have your Bibles already opened up to Hebrews 11. We're going to begin to read in verse 8. I'm going to read down through a portion of Scripture that speaks to us about Abraham. Abraham. And I want you to see tonight how Abraham gave God his best. Abraham, Abraham gave God his best, even <clears throat> when he was challenged and in one of the most difficult trials of his life, he still chose to give God his best. And that's what I want to do right now. Even though it's difficult, challenging, trying, uh, I want God to have my best. I, even though uh, I'm not meeting here at church with, uh, with you, I still want God to have my best each and every day for Him. So let's look at this uh, passage of Scripture, and uh, let's read uh, beginning in verse number 8, Hebrews 11. And I'm going to read down to verse 19. The Bible said, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should receive 
uh, after for an inheritance obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. And these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He hath prepared for them a city. By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten Son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Well, what a wonderful passage of Scripture and so many great truths there that challenge our hearts and lives and build our faith. And that's what we want to do tonight, to rise up, open up our hearts and to grow in our spiritual lives, to have our strength faithened, our, uh, our faith strengthened and to move forward for the Lord. And so let's look at how Abraham gave God his best. And let's let our hearts be challenged to do the same. Lord, we thank You for the Word of God we've read and our hearts been encouraged and challenged by it. And so now we're praying, God, by the Holy Spirit, You'll meet with folks with open hearts and minds. God, hearts that are, uh, are open for You to work and to speak to them. Uh, God, we know You'll not disappoint them. And God, may we be obedient. May we show faith by being obedient. And so, Lord, we pray that God, is, as it was as it was testified hereof in the Scriptures, uh, that God, uh, you, you saw the faith of Abraham, of Isaac, of Sarah. You saw their faith. And Lord, it pleased you. You were not ashamed of them to be known as their God. God, may our lives, may our faith in you uh, cause you, God, not to be ashamed, but may you, uh, may you uh, God, see our faith and be pleased. And so, Lord, minister to every heart. Uh, grow us that know You, and for those who may not know You who are watching, may they be brought into a place of faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And God, You get the glory for it all. And we ask it in Jesus' name we pray. And Amen. Amen. Well, you know, the book of Hebrews <clears throat> was a book that was given specifically to the Hebrews or the Jews who were born-again believers. Now, because of their faith in Jesus Christ, uh, the fact was that they could no longer hold to the religious empty traditions that had developed in Israel among the Jews. The Jewish faith, the Jewish practice of religion had been perverted and had become empty because it had been based upon works to bring them into and maintain a relationship with God. No man is ever saved by works, only by grace through the finished work of Jesus Christ. But these Jews who believed uh, had to forsake that. And because they did forsake the tradition uh, and the religion of the Jews, <clears throat> they often faced great tribulation because of that. They, they had a lot of hardships to themselves and to their families. But God gave them a book to encourage them to remind them that He's always faithful to those who give Him their best because He gave His best to them. And we will have to face hardships at times in our lives. There will be always difficult things that we have to go through in the world. If we will live for the Lord, we will face tribulation. Job uh, knew about this in the 14th chapter of Job. The first verse says, Man that's born of a woman is of a few days and full of troubles. 
uh, it's important that we prepare for troubling times. And the way we prepare for that is by anchoring our lives by faith in God and His Word. Our text spoke about some foundations here uh, that, we, that we read about. Cities with foundations. He looked for a city, verse 10, that hath foundations. Now listen, we're living in a world with no foundation. It takes a foundation driven deep and strong enough and secure enough for something that can be built upon it to remain and stand. And this world is built on sinking sand. Someday it will be dissolved. It's going to be destroyed and everything in it. But there is a city whose foundations are laid and built upon the finished work and person of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and, uh, and so we understand and know that uh, we need to anchor our lives by faith in the solid and sure foundations of God and His Word. It will always be nearness to the Lord and, and our relationship with Jesus Christ that sees us through. That will always be true. In our text, we're taken now, uh, beginning in human history, uh, we have seen the flood has occurred And we're beyond the flood. And now we begin to read about someone whose name was Abram. He'll be called Abraham. Uh, God is going to make him the father of the nation of Israel. The father uh, of true biblical faith as well as we see it uh, unfold in his life. Verse number 8 says, By faith Abraham, by faith when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and went out not knowing whether he went. Abraham was a man whose life was marked by faith. He went where he went by faith in God and His Word. Verse number 9 says, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise. By faith he stayed where he stayed because he had faith in God and faith in the Word of God. Verse 10 said, He looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. The Bible Bible says that he lived life in this world by faith. He was not living for this world and what this world could give him. He was living by faith for the world to come. Verse number 17, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. The Bible said that Abraham gave to God the best that he had by faith. This is the testimony of Abraham. He was a man who gave his best to God. Now, in the New Testament, we find some further things about Abraham. In James chapter 2, the Bible says, beginning in the 21st verse, Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the Scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Notice this last phrase, and he was called the friend of God. Notice the Bible says that God saw Abraham's faith and called him the friend of God. Imagine knowing that God saw your life and called you His friend. This is how it was for Abraham. And it was, uh, it was this way because it was by faith that Abraham lived, and by faith Abraham gave his very best to God. Our faith has to be, is to be in God. It is to be in who we know Him to be. True faith is having confidence in our souls that, that causes us to trust God with everything. That gives God everything. Even our best. We must trust God with our eternal souls forever if we will be saved from sin, death, and hell. We must trust that the Son, Jesus Christ, was the only acceptable sacrifice. That His death and burial and resurrection was the only thing that satisfies God for our sin debt. Christ alone is enough. He's sufficient and that it is in Christ that we have forgiveness, that we have the gift of eternal life. I'm entrusting Him by faith with my eternal soul and forever. And, uh, and by faith we, we do that. And then as we live our lives, we must then trust God with everything else. We must be willing to give Him our best. And we can give it all to God and trust Him with it all 
because we can know who God is. And I want to live that kind of life. And we see here how that can be. So notice these simple things tonight. Write down number one, the obedience of faith. Verse number eight says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. You know, we cannot live by faith and always have all the answers. We can't live by faith and and know all there is that we wish that we might know. If that were true, it wouldn't be living by faith. It would be living by sight. But God spoke to Abraham and directed him to move out, to move on and away from Ur. Ur, a a city and uh, a civilization known as the Chaldeans. It was a large city. The people were heathen people. They did not know the true and living God. They did not worship God in spirit and in truth. And and Abraham was right in the middle of all of that. And, And Abraham obeyed God. God spoke to Abraham and directed him to move out and move away from that. To have faith in God, His Word, and follow Him. And Abraham obeyed God. He demonstrated his faith by his obedience. And that's the way we'll always demonstrate real faith, is by obedience to the Word of God. If you'll ever know God, you that are watching tonight, if you'll ever know God, there will have to be a time when you obey the Word of God and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. The Bible says in in the 17th chapter of the book of Acts, beginning in the 30th verse, and the times of this ignorance God winked at but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because He hath appointed a day in the which He will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom He hath ordained, whereof He hath given assurance unto all men, and that He hath raised Him from the dead. Speaking about the Lord Jesus. There's a time when men do not know God. In fact, we believe most of the world today does not know God. They do not know Jesus Christ. They've never heard the Gospel. There there will be a time in your life when you were ignorant of God. When you didn't know about your sin. That you're a sinner born that way. You, You didn't know you owed a debt of sin. That in order for you to pay it, you're going to have to be separated from God forever in a place called hell and where there's eternal torment. There There will have been a time when you did not know what God did for you, that He gave to you His only begotten Son, that that He died to save you and lives again to give you eternal life. There, There will be a time when you didn't know that. But when you know, when you know, when you have heard this, when you understand that God has spoken and has commanded all men to repent, and to receive His Son and eternal life, then you will be now accountable for what you have heard. And God expects obedience and faith. And God desires that you be saved. He desires it because it's essential for you. And He desires it for the glory of His Son because His Son Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and rose again for you, for sinful men. And when men receive Him as their Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ is glorified. Have you obeyed God in that? Have you by faith trusted Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of sin? Have you been made right with God through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ? This is, this is how we begin to know God. This is how we have a relationship with Him by faith, by obedience concerning the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, Abraham didn't have all the answers at the beginning. He didn't even know where the destination was. But he obeyed God and he went out of that lost city and began to follow God with his life and family. And I want to encourage you who may be watching tonight, get out of this lost world and get away from uh, their thoughts and thinking and their disobedience and rebellion and the destination uh, that's going to lead them to a Christless eternity and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. We read down to verse number 11, and the Bible said, Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. 
That's, that's faith. My faith is not as strong as I am. It's not as big as I can make it. My faith is strong and big because it is in a God who has all power and who has all strength and, into, and to whom there is nothing that's impossible. And so we read here about Sarah, Abraham's wife. And we understand that when God said to get up and go and follow me, that Abraham obeyed God and Sarah did too. She, she must have believed God as well. And that the God of her husband was to be her God. And as God led her husband, she would follow. And so she did. You know, it's one of God's greatest blessings to have a companion that we can journey through this world with that knows God and will live by faith with us. This is the way that it should be. This is the way that it can be for everyone. Parents should teach this to their children. You ought to teach your children that the only companion for them for life is someone that knows the Lord Jesus Christ, who has faith in Him, and who wants to give their best to God. That's the only option. That's the only choice. You know, when our daughter was growing up and and uh, was young, and uh, Angie and I were praying for her and for her future companion. Uh, we prayed that uh, uh, that uh, she would understand and know that if if there was a young man that wasn't a born again believer, that didn't believe the Bible, that didn't practice biblical faith, scriptural faith, as we saw it in the Word of God, that that young man wasn't even a potential companion, not not even not even a prospect for a future relationship with. And this is something you need to begin to teach your children today. And you that have young adults, and they are in relationships with others, uh, is there been a conversation about whether or not they know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior? It is my practice that when a young couple comes to me and, and they're asking about uh, marriage and, 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 and getting married, and, uh, of course, I've just made it a, a decision in my ministry that unless one or the other of those uh, young people are part of the church family that God has sent me to, uh, that I'm not going to be involved in that. Uh, but uh, but uh, my first meeting with those two is, is, is a discussion whereby each of them share their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ because that's the only way that a marriage can be built and grounded and move forward. And so, uh, this ought to be something that you parents teach your children. And, and as an adult, you adults that are watching this service, and perhaps you have had previous relationships, and, uh, or maybe you've never been in a serious relationship, uh, whether you've been married or, or have never been, uh, right now, as an adult, you ought to remember uh, that 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 unless someone knows the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, has a heart for God, believes God like you do, wants to give God their best, then that's, that's not a relationship that you're going to be, uh, want to be in because it will not help you grow spiritually. It will only draw you away from God. And if we want to be the friend of God, if we want to walk with God, then we'll have to do it in the midst of a world that does not believe in God and obey His Word but we can and must believe His Word and obey. And, and, and we will only give God our best as we believe in who He is and we believe in His Word. Write down number two, the outlook of faith. Hebrews 11 verse 9 says, By faith He sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with Him of the same promise. For He looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Now, it will be your outlook, your perspective of life that determines your actions. If you believe that this world is all there is and that there will be nothing beyond it, then you will live your life for this world. If you believe though that there is an eternity awaiting you, that it will be there that you will be forever, then you'll live your life in this world like this world is only temporary, that it's not the end all that it has nothing to offer you that you can take forward with you when you leave it. And the Bible says that Abraham lived in tabernacles. He never had a permanent home. Uh, we would have said that he was a nomad. And he'd, 
he would, he would follow God and stay where God put him until God used him there and the way that God wanted to use him. And then if, uh, uh, if God wanted to move him, he was ready to move. He had no permanent roots in this world. And, and he understood that he was only passing through. He lived for eternity. He wanted to make his greatest impact over there in eternity. And God has given each of us a measure of time in this world. And He's given to each of us certain talents and some some treasures, material means and resources. And it will be our outlook, our perspective of life that will determine what we do with these things. We can can choose to spend them up on this world, life, living in this world. We can make this world as comfortable as we can, as secure as we can. And then someday we're going to leave it all behind and we're going to enter eternity empty-handed. And without the Lord Jesus Christ, we'll enter eternity unprepared for eternity and we'll be forever separated from Him. Or, if our perspective and outlook is eternal, we can choose by faith to invest our time, our treasures and talents into the things of God. We can invest them in His work in this world. We, We can... Uh, we can invest them in eternal things that will go on before us and remain with us forever. This world will not understand an eternal outlook. It will laugh and ridicule you when you choose to live by faith, but you will never regret doing it a million years from now. I hope you'll write down one final thing, the offering of faith. The Bible says in Verse 16, but now they desire a better country that is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He hath prepared for them a city. And by faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. There came a day when God asked Abraham to make a choice. What will you give me? Will you give me your best? Are you willing to give me and trust me with your very best? And there are so many things here to consider, but we cannot take time to speak of everything that we read in this passage of Scripture. But we do know that God had promised to make Abraham's descendants a nation and that they would become the people of God. We know that God said it would be through Isaac that God would make this happen through the children of Isaac. At that time, Isaac had no children. If Isaac died now, the promise of God would not happen, humanly speaking. God brought Abraham to a faith moment. Will I act by sight and human reasoning or by faith in God, knowing who God is and having faith in in what I know that God can do? And there was nothing more precious to Abraham than Isaac. And God asked him, asked him by faith to give him his best. And we know that Abraham chose to act by faith. Genesis 22 records this for us. If we go back there, Genesis 22 beginning in verse number 3, the Bible said, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto this young man, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I'm thankful for every word that I have in my King James Bible. They're there on purpose, and I don't want to miss any of them. Verse 5 helps me understand how Abraham was thinking. It said and records for us the conversation he had with those servants. He said to them, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and I and the lad will come again to you. This is what he, this is what he was thinking. He believed that he and Isaac will be coming back down off that mountain together. We read on in verse 6, and the Bible said, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here, I, here am I, my son. 
And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide Himself a lamb for the burnt offering. And so they went both of them together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. The angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. What faith. Choosing to give God His best. That one thing that was everything. Trusting God with it. Giving it to God. You know, I struggle with the small things. We don't, we don't like to be inconvenienced at all when it comes to either doing what we want to do or doing what we know we should do. As I read through this, there's a lot there I would have struggled with. The Bible said that that it was Abraham uh, that clayed the wood for the burnt offering. Uh, that probably wasn't something he usually did. He rose up early. The Bible said he had to travel three days before they came to the place where God uh, directed them to stop. All of those things are things we struggle to do day in and day out. We, we struggle to make any kind of sacrifice for anything. We, we want everything for ourselves. Uh, uh, we want to think we might need that for the future. But I thought and I asked myself, what kind of friend can I be when I'm not willing to give to my friend my best? And we see here that when Abraham was willing to give God his best, that God gave it back to Abraham. And He gave Abraham far more he gave Abraham his best. He kept his word to Abraham and he used Abraham's faith to impact the world. We must learn that at the end of all of our strife, all of our struggling, all of our uncertainty with our time, our treasure, and our talents, that all will come to an end when we simply by faith give it all to God. Give it all to God. Then that ends the struggle and strife of what we do with it or or can we keep it? Or will it be enough? It ends it all. We, we just simply give it all to God. Give Him everything. And He will take it. And He will care for it. And He will use it for His glory. And He will always give back to us far greater than we could ever have ourselves. Romans 8, chapter 8, verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Is God for you today? Some people feel like that if there is a God, He is not for them. If He were for them, how could He allow bad things to happen and tragedies and sicknesses and death if God be for us? But listen please, there is no doubt God is for us. The Bible said He's not willing that any should perish, but all that come to repentance. He wants all men to know Him. He wants men to have forgiveness of their sin, to be saved from sin, death, and hell. And He gave you His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, he that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? We spend our life worrying about getting and gaining and having and keeping and holding on to it and growing it and hoping it will be enough when really what we need to do is give it all to God. Give Him all. Give Him our best. Give Him everything. And know that, that He's the God who gave us His best. And He's going to give us far more than we could ever have in our own. Now, I love the way this passage of Scripture ends. How, how Abraham 
saw his God. How do you see God today? Is God able to meet your needs today? Is He able to do what you can't do? Is He able to do the impossible? Can He he do something in the lives of your loved ones that you feel like is impossible? Maybe a husband that's unsaved or someone that's away from God or children that have turned away from God. Is God not able to help them to, to do for them what they need? I want you to see Abraham's God. And I want you to know that He is our God. Hebrews 11 verse 19 says, Accounting, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead. This is how God, this is how God God was to Abraham. Abraham's God was a God that even if even if Abraham had had, had, would have had to sacrifice his son, had ended the life of the promised son. He believed that God was able to raise him from the dead. And that even though he might have died on that mountaintop, Isaac, that he and Isaac would have walked back down off of that mountain. And they would have joined together again with those servants that they left at the foot of that mountain. That that was Abraham's God. And Abraham gave to that God his best. I believe if we can see God to be the God of Abraham, then we can give God our best. That's what I want to give Him. I hope that you do as well. Give Him your best. Give Him your all. Give Him, give him your life. All that goes with it. Give Him your marriage. Give Him your relationship. Give Him your family. Give Him your home. Give Him your children. Give Him everything you have. And know that He gave you everything He had. And that He has far more in His heart for you than you can ever get, gain, or have by your own hand. Let's have faith to give God our best even now. Let's let, let's let Him have it all. And let's see what God will do. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior and you're watching this, I hope you'll give God your heart. You let, Jesus Christ took your sin to the cross. He died there. He paid your sin debt. Now, if you don't know Him as your Savior, you're still carrying that debt. You're still going to have to pay that debt. But He wants it. He took it. and he, He's paid that debt. And He'll cleanse you of it. He'll he'll forgive you of it if you'll ask Him. Look to the Lord Jesus Christ, God's greatest, His best He gave to you. Know Him as your Savior, then give Him all you are. And watch what God will do. Well, we're going to pray together. We're finished tonight. I hope you'll join with us on Wednesday evenings at 7. Uh, Be sure to keep up to date on all the information and changes and schedules and things we'll be putting on our social media sites. And uh, just stay in touch with your local church in these ways, in these times, and have faith in God and give Him your best as we look to the Lord tonight. Father, thank You for Your goodness. Thank You for Your grace. Thank You for the best You gave us, Your only begotten Son. God, help us to give us uh, to give to You our best. Help us to see You as, as You really are. And uh, God, know that You're able, that there's nothing too hard for You. And then, Lord, help us. Uh, Lord, just to live and give to You all we are and have, even in the time we live in, and trust You for for everything that we need. And uh, we're thankful for it. And God, we're asking You to encourage people, help us to grow and move forward, even, God, when uh, it would seem that that we would be knocked back. And Lord, for someone watching that's unsaved, may they trust just simply by faith the finished work of Jesus Christ for their life. And then, Lord, I hope they'll contact us and let us begin to help them to grow in their relationship with God and know what it means to be a born-again believer and trust in Jesus Christ. So we thank You for these things. We ask them all in Jesus' name we pray. And amen. And amen. Good evening.